Peace. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you back into another edition of the File Playland. As always, I'm your File Player. I uh, wanted to make a more upbeat, happy video. Um, and it has to do with the liberal left uh, imploding upon itself. Um, and I guess I'm also happy because the Mets are going to be playing tonight, which uh, I won't touch on that too uh, deeply. But um, this video is actually about... Uh, mayoral candidate of new york city uh andrew yang getting uh, attacked by his rivals within the democratic party and by the new york power structure which is very quote-unquote liberally based but uh andrew yang uh as some of you may or may not know uh, he's running for the mayor of new york he had a brief uh, attempt at running for the president of the United States in which he failed. I thought he had better policies than, or better ideas at least, than everybody running on the Democratic ticket, if you will. I think um, Tulsi Gabbard had better principles, but... Um, Yang, um, coming from that business perspective and being able to explain his thoughts uh, in a long, um, drawn out fashion where he's not stumbling upon himself. Like I thought, you know, he's like brighter than a lot of the other people that they had to offer. Now, as far as uh, New York politics go, I think um, Andrew Yang is probably a, a comet compared to the rest of the candidates that are running. Due to the fact that, I mean, at this point or at this juncture, I don't think that anybody who's even a whiff of um, having a, a whiff of conservativeness to him has any shot at um, winning anything in New York at this current juncture. So um, having said all that, even though Andrew Yang is uh, very liberal, like as far as his ideas go, um when he was running for the president, a lot of people may know that he wanted to give a UBI, universal basic income of $1,000 per month to every resident. He wants to do something like that similarly in New York, which is uh, a UBI for the poorest half of New York um, of $167, um, which is not a terrible idea, believe it or not. Um, the... He's also pumping the brakes on like trying to tax the uh, super rich of New York in a, in an effort like to not drive them out, and, I, and that's also a good idea. And I'll get to that in a minute. But um, uh, another idea that he had, he's trying to get people like that are working from home to commute back to New York, um, which they're attacking him for that and for his. Uh, not taxing the rich as much and they're calling him little trump um his uh political opponents which is uh stupid i mean like and that's all you need like nowadays like and i mean in, in politics in um in the country but in new york nobody does any sort of um deep thought as far as um who they vote for like they'll like they'll go like and give you a a, 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 a a small glance over, and so long as you looked apart, like in New York, like you, you'll uh, you'll um, you'll get votes, or you know, you could win the ticket. The only exception are when things get uh, really really bad in New York, which they're really really bad right now. But right now, New York is super corrupt. When you have um, people who were city councilmen or current like sitting assemblymen who's have who have family members that are also running uh voting polls and like work at the board of elections like we do now in New York um right now like i mean unless things get uh fixed like it'll be hard for anybody like republican or conservative to have a shot but in New York, like, you know, right now, I mean, in, in general, like, all you got to do is say a few choice words and make it seem like you're uh, totally, like, with the people and you could, you could um, have your way. And Andrew Yang's ideas may not 
seem at first glance like they're totally with the people. You know, um, because he's saying not to tax the ultra rich. You don't, and you don't want to drive them away. And I'll, t- and I'll, I'll give you an example of, like I said before, like, um, because I've seen that play out firsthand. Because I have a house in, uh, um, Florida, and um, it's really close to West Palm Beach, and West Palm Beach, or Palm Beach, like, um, it's a pretty affluent area. Not where I live. Like, I don't live in West Palm Beach. But um, this past summer, like normally there's nobody there in the summer. Like everybody who's from there like lives in New York. But um, this past summer, it was like inundated. Like nobody, like because the people that live there usually live in New York in the summertime and then go to Florida or Palm Beach in the winter. So you could go like to downtown like Palm Beach and like there'll be like, High-end boutique stores like Gucci and stores that'll be open no matter what. Um, and it's all closed, like 100%. And this is not like a, a bootleg area. This is like super, super, super affluent. But um, being that the tide has changed and a lot of people don't want to live in New York outright, um, especially if you got a little coin to you, like they they were, uh, Palm Beach is like thriving in the summer now because... Uh, Nobody's coming back and forth. Like, you know, those people that are spending their money in New York in the summer, um, which is usually a sizable amount when you figure like the Hamptons or uh, Midtown Manhattan, like all those bars, clubs. um, They're just saying like, you know, to hell with it. I'll just stay in Florida and spend my money here. So what uh, Andrew Yang is saying is that the people that have the means to go back and forth or depart outright from New York being that they have like money, you don't want them to bounce because then who, you know, who is going to, you know, sp- spend in like a very, very tenuous like uh, economy like that's New York right now. You know, um, nobody's trying to spend um, money at like the Palm, the Palm restaurant or Peter Luger's like when you got to like, do takeout or wear a mask like a buffoon like you know a lot of restaurants like you know or a lot of people try to give you guilt trips like to you know um frequenting restaurants still like you know and like buying takeout but um why do that when i could buy like you know a six dollar plate of food like from a place that does takeout regularly and um pay like 49 dollars like for takeout plus like tips like and then they think you're gonna give them like 20 percent tips um, from a high end restaurant that's doing that's just doing takeout, and you don't get the like high end experience like doing takeout. Like so, I think Andrew Yang is trying to say like without saying that. Um, he would like to get the economy up and rolling, in New York, and just for that, like his opponents are saying that he's a little Mister T, Mister Forty Five. And um, the unfortunate thing is that, like, a lot of the people that may or may not vote for him won't even, like, research in or no, won't even give, like, a lot of these ideas that he have any deep thoughts. And not not to say that his ideas are, like, grandiose or good, but his opponents, like, uh, um, that guy Stringer, like, or Eric something, like, they're buffoons. Like those people have been around. Like the, he's the he's the current Brooklyn Borough president. Like the one of his like his main opponent, and he used to be like a cop. Um, I've met him before too. He's a total buffoon. Like total leech. Like typical like New York politician. Like you're at the uh, beck and call of like the lawyer class of New York on 16 Court Street, and you know just total pariahs, rats. Um. Um, and I think one of the other people that's running against him used to run the sanitation department. I think that that young lady has no shot. Um, I think somebody else was like the control of New York, probably no shot too. But Yang, I mean, like in his own, like presents a little bit of danger to the, the anybody else who's running on the ticket because he has a national um, audience. You know, um, say what you will, but you know, Yang, you know, David Chappelle, I think. Um, was um 
like a fan of uh, Andrew Yang. Um, so he has, and and he's been on like national, um, you know, outlets. Uh, I think he was on Rogan at one point, but you know, anybody who's uh, in New York now, a city that just looks like straight like crap. Um, cause I work in New York. I'm not saying it from afar, like, because I'm like anti-liberal, which I am. Um, but I just came from New York 30 minutes ago, you know, like, um, I go to New York pretty much every day even though I live in uh, Jersey, but, um, New York is a dump, like, period, like, uh, like, I saw two rats when I was driving yesterday, like, it's just dead, like, you know, east side New York, dead, like, you know, uh, uh, Midtown and Times Square, ghetto, like, um, Soho, Chinatown, dead, dead, you know, ain't not, there's nothing going on in New York, so, I mean, like, what, you wanna, like, just stay, like, to where there's no economic injection into, you know, New York. And I mean, like, the $167 plan, like, as far as, like, the UBI of uh, New York City, um, that money, I mean, like, when you give it, like, to the lower half of, of um, the residents of New York, as far as, like, the, low, the poorest half of the residents of New York, I mean, it sucks to say because, I mean, like, like Latin people, like myself, like, you know, or minorities, we have, like, the worst spending habits, like, so, you know, we, we'll uh, waste that money, like, um, immediately, but we're not wasting that money, like, online, more likely than not. We're wasting that money, like, you know, two doorsteps away from, like, where we live, and that's usually, um, that's good for local business, I mean. Not that I'm like a big proponent of local business, but right now, like a local business would need a uh, injection of income, if you will. Um, and that's like a good way at like, or very easy way at solving that. Um, I'm pretty sure like New York and uh, also Andrew Yang um, has mentioned that he wants to um, save 70% uh, of the money that the feds are giving him, like which is like 7 billion or 6 billion that they want to allocate to New York. And he's saying to squirrel away 70% uh, of it. And that's also a uh, a little T type plan, like according to his opponents. But it's just stupidity. I mean, like the, and I honestly, like, you know, what? why I find my, why I'm happy about it is because the liberal left, like, believe it or not, is imploding upon itself. It's like uh, my uh, YouTube videos on, um, like recommendations I'm getting recommended. I was just talking to my wife about that, that. Like a lot of the recommendations that I'm getting are like crap, like stuff that I'll never watch like about skateboarding or rap. Like, and personally I've made, uh, I've made, uh, alluded, I've alluded to this in the past that I don't listen to rap anymore. Like I used to listen to rap. Um, big fan of rap. Like since I was like four or five years old, fat boys, like, you know, and I just stopped listening to rap. Like, not outright. Like, I don't li like look for new rap since, like, 2004, let's say. And my son doesn't, you know, he's not allowed to listen to rap. But um, I'm getting suggestions for, like, not only, like, rap-based stuff, like, not, like, mute rap videos, but, like, channels that are, like, more for, like, like a hip-hop base of, like, real, real young people, like, stupid, like, stupid shit. Like, you know, like, like, two random, like, you know, teenage couples like oh you know challenge this like i don't watch shit like that like i so i uh, and, and i think that either a like youtube is just really uh putting the kibosh on a lot of the stuff that i would normally listen to or it's a combination of a youtube putting the kibosh on a lot of the stuff that i would listen to and b that the algorithm is imploding upon itself which i see as a good thing because a lot of people like me like um are really looking for specific stuff that I want to see on YouTube. And if it's not there, like, then I won't watch YouTube. I'll go to something else. Um, and, like, hopefully that brings um, the platform to its knees or, like, to show regular stuff. Like, everybody's way too sensitive and, like, you just can't, like, even see something. Like, you know, so YouTube makes an algorithm that implodes upon itself, like, you know, um, so that sensitive eyes don't see it. 
but it's the same thing that's happening with the liberal left like as far as like it's imploding upon itself where and you get to say a uh no base claim of like oh well you're similar to these republicans or you're similar to the 45th and um you don't got to show anything good that you're going to do and like you don't got to be a good person like all you got to do is level some uh cheap insults and um you're good to go you don't got to talk about any plans that you want to do or you know any uh, of your personal thoughts like of uh what your um what you base your uh, you know your plans upon or you know what your um habits are like you know like where you're drawing your conclusions like you don't got to discuss any of those things all you got to do is level some insults and like you know you're good to go and another thing that um it's kind of helped in that endeavor is the fact that 45 is no longer around. So now like, you know, you got to pick uh, enemies that are really not like, you know, uh, close to you, like in a sense, everybody on the Republican ticket is worthless even before like, or after like um, 45 was around, but um, they're no threat. Like they'll cave into you in a minute. Like they're the class, they're the party of, you know, uh, hold your horses. Like, but um, so now that they pose like very little to no threat, um, you know, the liberal class like is going to start imploding on itself and it's uh, one step away from its death now. If anything, like the what's going to be the real death knell of the uh, Democratic Party and the liberal um, thinking is when minorities like myself start walking away in concert, like, you know, um, and that's going to happen soon too. Um, but let me know what you guys think with that. I'm out. Peace.